beautiful leather place and um, what would you tell us about your company? Uh, so we are a family run leather business and we've been going for over 70 years. Uh, I run the business now with my sister and uh, we're fully women led and Ooh, women run. Woman um, power. Women <laughs> power. But, um, <laughs> You know, um, we um, stock and sell a huge range of leathers um, for garments as well as accessories and, and footwear, etc. Um, so, the, for us, the main thing about the leather is, you know, we have a real passion for it. We've been brought up around leather all of our lives, and um, you know, we absolutely love what we do. Every leather here, which is chosen by us, we've got a story about everything. We just love it. Um, we love the versatility of it. We love um, all the different things that you can make and do. Um, and you know, we we really want people to understand all the different properties that leather has and all the different things that you can make with it. So it was your dad who started the company. So you, as a child, grew up here. Basically, um, like around leather. And... We definitely grew up around leather. I mean, hide and seek around the warehouse in amongst the bundles was definitely, you know, a lot of happy memories and a big source of fun for both of us growing up. Um, and often, you know, leather would come in and out of the house. He'd be sort of delivering wow. to places, dropping off, uh, picking up big uh, deliveries from the airport, etc. Wow. In between going back into the warehouse or being sent to customers. So we were always surrounded by it, about, around the smell and the touch of it. Um, and I think that's just something, you know, when you're brought up around it, it's just inherent within you. You know, you just you just have an appreciation of something. So. And you understand the product much Definitely. better, yeah? I think so, yeah. So, so you understand that this product is really natural and the best product from all these ages we can... Actually, it was the first material which humankind start um, wearing. A hundred percent, absolutely right. And that's the thing, you know, with leather, you know, it's a byproduct of the meat industry at the end of the day. So what we're doing exactly. is we're upcycling something that would otherwise be wasted. That's um, so and important. that's really important to remember. And it doesn't matter whether we eat meat or not. The fact of the matter is these skins are in circulation irrespectively. Um, and the best thing that we can do is to utilize them. Exactly. And that's by finishing them, tanning them, preparing them uh, and, and making them usable for different things um, you know they've got a great longevity to them um, unlike uh, plastic imitations which are part of the petrochemical exactly. industry um, they'll take tens of thousands of years to degrade when you know when, exactly. they, when they're not in yet circulation and then what it takes like 100 years well it takes about 70 to 100 years exactly um, and that's really important you know we've got a real throwaway culture now and i think people have to make a really good and sound decision when they're buying what they want and also when they're making as to what the materials are um, you know we have to really be conscious about what it is that we're using what we're making um, exactly. and you know leather is it's natural at the end of the day and then on the end of the day as long as we've got burgers in uh, popular places yeah as long we're gonna have letters around and would be mm, not pity to actually throw that material out and, and that's what happens because if it's not utilized it's actually discarded exactly uh, because it's you know, the people the, are not aware of that. No. that if we eat the burger and the leather industry is not gonna buy off skins from the food market, it's gonna be wasted. And basically we're saving animal to the end and we're giving full respect to the animal to use everything. And it is a you know food chain reaction and you yeah. know like we are predators as a, as a humans and I'm not saying let's go and kill animals for skin. But if we eat in it, yeah, that would be really you know, wastage to, to throw rest of it. And yes. we're using everything. We're using anymore, everything. Isn't it? And, you know, we're doing the best with what we have to make sure that it's, a, a you know, something that we can use and, and keep on using. Oh, fantastic. And you are supplied from the tanneries, you know, well known. You've got a long relationship with them, yeah? And you know that they've got all these... Uh, good practices to save environment and use everything friendly, isn't That's it? That's absolutely right. Um, so the tanneries that we work with, we've had relationships for decades actually, a lot of them. We work with small artisan tanneries mainly as well. Um, they're all regulated. I mean, this isn't, you know, you can't just buy leather. We're not buying leather that, you know, someone's slaughtered their lamb and then they've just like made the skin. It doesn't work like that. Exactly. It's actually from farmed animals. Um, it's all traceable. I mean, let's face it, it's part of the meat industry and what happens is the meat is prepared or the, the animals are, are sent to torture and they're you know off onto their food chain the skins are secondary so actually what happens is everything gets lumped together so while we can say okay uh we know that our lamb napper is finished in italy 
on Middle East raw material, that's the kind of uh, species or the type of uh, land that they're using. But actually, what we can't do is trace that back to the individual farms. No, because obviously, obviously no, you know, no, everything's that, that, kind of sent yeah, together, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then by the time the skins come in, they come in, they come in maybe from different farms and different areas. So you know, when we say traceability, there's to a certain extent. Yeah. But certainly, once the skins come in and they're processed, of course, we can step, we can trace. Yeah, yeah, back. yeah. How they were tanned. And, exactly. Uh, and, and exactly. Yeah. Saying about tanning is the word which maybe not everyone one is actually aware of and I would like you to take us through the type of the way the leather is produced okay so what's kind of process in it okay so basically the skins um, they are um, sent uh, to a factory uh, what will happen there is they are prepared so they are salted and that sort of stops the putrefaction process and stops them from decaying they have to be prepared in a, in a solution um, once they are ready, they're then um, sent over to the tanneries. The tanneries will receive them in what's called a wet blue state. So that yes. means that they've been, um, they have had a certain chemical or a certain process in them that just stabilizes the skins and that makes them ready for tanning. Tanning is the old, the age old process of preparing the skins. Um, what Did you know that is, the first process was actually urinating on the leathers? That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, Probably that was original countries. actually tanning. <laughs> and I learned that from very old, uh, Furrier guy. Oh who wow! Told me. And I was yes. like, oh really? Yeah, <laughs> so, probably wouldn't smell so no, nice. Yeah, either. yeah, probably not. But you know, when you were caveman, that maybe didn't well, matter that yes, much. I think we've advanced a little bit since then. So we advanced um, a bit. Yes, we're we're still using skins. Exactly. We're still using the skins, but the methods of tanning have changed a little bit. So yeah. basically, the um, in terms of um, dyeing the skins, so obviously we want to get them into these beautiful colours, etc. Um, the main thing is they're put into these huge drums um, and in the drums they have colours added to them, they have certain chemicals added to them that are going to uh, give them the, the colour and the depth of colour that dyes those skins through. So it's sort of tongue board and that goes through a few different processes yeah. and a similar kind of thing. And, and depending on the ultimate finish of the skins then depends on, on what these next processes are. Um, you know, we have lots of different types of leather and different types of finishes. Perfect. Um, so thank you Bianca for sharing your amazing knowledge about the leathers you've got in your warehouse. And we welcome everybody to come to Water Regional in London. Got amazing news for our viewers. Yes, yes. anyone that wants to contact us uh, to buy some leathers, we're offering a 5% discount. If you quote YT21, when you're ordering, you can do that through um, the website, waterregional.com. You can email us at info at waterregional.com. Uh, we're on Instagram and all the socials. Um, so any way that you want to contact us, you're welcome. And we're more than happy to send out cuttings um, and give you any further information that you might want to know. Uh, yeah, Bianca is lovely to talk to. She's very passionate. So yeah, ask, fire up the questions and ask about that discount code. And <laughs> I'm going to give you all details under the video. And thank you so much for watching.